Hey guys, so welcome and thank you all so much for tuning in today. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Kat. I'm a head coach at JPS Health and Fitness. And to, for today's episode, we're going to explore managing mental and physical health during lockdown. A topic that's of course very important for all of us here in Melbourne at the moment. So I want to start by saying that we can't simply sit around and wait for the lockdown to be over as much as we would all, of course, love that. We, this is all about actions that we can take right now. And managing our mental and physical health in a productive way will make ourselves, the people we care about and our community stronger. And although restrictions are slowly easing and we're taking these small steps out, there's still a long way to go. And I know that for some of you watching this, you are perhaps maybe, you know, working at home for the rest of the year, which is a long time. So it is important for us to start taking action now and looking at things that we can do. So this will be part one of a four part series for looking after our mental and physical health and our self-esteem and our morale during this period. So I hope you all get a few key takeaways out of today. We're going to start by looking at managing our mental state. So mental state, as opposed to mental health, refers to a combination of how we're thinking and how we're feeling. It explores our mood, our overall morale, our emotions, and our ability to relate well with others and help other people. So even if you're watching this and um, you're not suffering from any kind of, say, mental health condition, it's often just our mental state that's negatively affected by the lockdown. So, like I said, our mood, self-esteem, you know, our ability to remain motivated in just our daily tasks. And today we're going to look at some things to help with this. And we're particularly going to focus on taking care of our self-esteem, actions we can take, etc. All right, so we're going to look at sort of two key ideas today. The first thing that I want everyone to consider is just starting with acknowledging your own personal situation as it is currently, rather than waiting or hoping for restrictions to ease before we make changes to our lifestyle. So this is all referring to our health behaviours. And I want you to think about right now, so today, and maybe reviewing yourself for the past, say, week or two weeks, I want you to think about what is working and what isn't working and what can you do for the things that aren't working. So I want you to think about your answer in terms of the actions you can take at the moment instead of when restrictions ease, I'll be able to do this. So let's just go over a quick example. Instead of when gyms reopen, I'll be able to get back into training regularly, as, a, as an example. If you say that, I want you to think about what about for the next, you know, two months or even three months, what are you going to be doing between now and then? So I'm not saying that everyone who's watching this needs to start getting into a really serious training routine right now. But again, coming back to the whole point of managing our morale and our self-esteem, as we know, training is extremely beneficial for our physical and mental health and for relieving endorphins and boosting our mood. So again, coming back to, instead of thinking when restrictions are over, I'll get back to, you know, taking care of that aspect of my health. I want you to think about right now, like today, what can I actually do? And it might even be something so small, like I'm going to do 10 push-ups and 10 squats every Monday and Wednesday. And that sounds so small and so basic, but if you're doing 
nothing at all in terms of training, that's going to be better than nothing. And something simple like that to just get you started will be better than just leaving it and waiting for things to reopen. Now, I'm just using training and exercise as an example. Maybe you've already got a great training routine going, and if you do, well done. I just want you right now to consider something or maybe a few things that aren't going well for you personally in the topic of physical and mental health. And I want you to start considering actions you can take now in this current physical environment and steer away from sort of that planning, hoping and delaying for, um, for making changes for when life goes back to normal. Because honestly, we don't actually know when that will be. Okay, so next topic we're gonna talk about is self-comparison to other people's situations and how to sort of avoid this all with the purpose of improving our own self-esteem. So a really important topic that I'd like us to address in this environment, these lockdowns, is the use of social media. Instagram and you know Facebook and everything else, but particularly Instagram, is filled with people posting the best highlights of their lives. And that's okay, we all do it, but I just want everyone who's watching this to take a moment to consider that when we're scrolling through our phones every day, we are looking at images that are carefully constructed. We're looking at, you know, the top five percenters or one percenters even of people's lives. We're in our explore section, we're looking at a photo of someone with abs popping, you know, at a beach in Europe, or we're looking at people in a lot of fake tan and tight gym clothes doing glued exercises or whatever it is. All the time, it's always, always popping up in our feed. And that's okay. It's not to say that these people shouldn't be posting these images or videos. I just, want everyone who's watching this right now to consider that a lot of what we see on Instagram isn't an accurate representation of real life. It's a constructed, edited, carefully selected version that has been posted. However, we consume this content every single day. And it's often while we're, you know, we're sitting at home, perhaps we're in our pajamas and we're not looking our best, but this is the content that we're constantly exposed to. So not only does this cause a negative self-perception of, you know, our body image and, and how we look, it's also just not good for our overall life comparison. We're consumed by this content while we are here in lockdown and it makes us feel even worse about our situation and it does deflate our mood. I did quite a bit of research on this topic in terms of social media and self-esteem last year in my final year of uni and one of the studies that I referenced in one of my papers, I want to just quickly explained today. So there was a 2017 study completed in the UK of 160 females aged 18 to 25. And the study actually found a trend, which was pretty much the higher the amount of time spent on social media, particularly viewing Fitspo accounts, these people scored lower on their self-comparison, which, which refers to judgment of yourself and perception of your own success and failure. And also these people who spent more time on social media showed greater frequency of negative moods. So basically, more social media equals worse mood, worse perception of yourself, right? So this isn't just my opinion. This has been studied, this is a real issue. And that UK study was just one example. So the point of this little discussion today 
isn't for me to say, spend less time on social media or deactivate your account or something like that. Because I know that that's easy to say, but the truth is, you know, that might last like one day or a week or whatever. And then we go back to being on it a lot. The point of today is just to simply remind everyone watching, everyone who's listening right now, I just want you to all recognize this, recognize that what you're scrolling through, just remind yourself that this, these are the highlights, these are the best of the best of people's lives. And this is a constructed version. And for the most part, people's lives aren't like this. They're similar to, everyone's is, you know, quite similar to yours and, and that's okay. And for some of you watching, I know you might be thinking, yeah, I've heard this all before. I know that, you know, social media has edited photos, whatever. But I think it's just really important to remind ourselves of this while we are in lockdown because we're, you know, most of us aren't living our current best lives, but we do have more time to sit at home and scroll through other people's content and it leads to that negative self-perception and all those sorts of things. So it's just really important to keep in mind. So I guess the two key takeaways from today's mini episode are firstly, focusing on what you can do now instead of planning and hoping for what you can do for your health when things go back to normal. And secondly, when it comes to social media use, always remind yourself that the content you view and consume on social media isn't an accurate representation of people's lives. And just remember to not compare your situation right now with the highlights of people's lives that you view on a daily basis. Frequently remind yourself of this every single day. This is so, so important for your self-esteem and motivation and just perception of yourself. Cool, so guys, that's it for today. As I mentioned, this was just a part one intro of a four part series on looking after your mental, mental and physical health during lockdown. There will be more episodes to come on different topics. So these will be coming up in the weeks ahead. If anyone has any questions or if you found this presentation useful, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. All right. Thanks, everyone.